It's the promises. He had the promises. He had the promises. He had the promises that God was going to. So how do I, where do I find that? And I'm glad you asked. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is the chapter of the blessing. Verse number three. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket, your kneading trough will be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They'll come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. Underline that phrase. We'll come back to that. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he's giving you. The Lord will establish you. Now you can change some words. The Lord will bless you in the company he's given you. The Lord will bless you in the business you have. The Lord will bless you where you, you follow that. They're agricultural, so he's speaking to their prosperity. Verse 9, the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath. To who? To who? The oath he made to Abraham. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God, walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord. You can't see God. How did Potiphar see God? Success. All the peoples on earth, all the peoples, all your neighbors, all your friends will see that you are of God. God is with you. Verse 11, the Lord will grant you abundant, what? Prosperity and the fruit of of your womb, the young of your livestock, the crops of your ground, and the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. Underline that again. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands, Lord your God, that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Now, friend, this is your legal right. This is who you are. And if you continue looking at yourself past Adam's fall and you see your weaknesses and the problems, you got to go back and see how Adam was created to live, how you're created to live. Because Jesus made a way for that to be reestablished in your life. This is how your life should look. This is your legal destiny. This is your inheritance. This is who you are. Not your uh, disloyalty, not all the problems you've come through. That's not you. This is you. Can someone tell me how we cannot prosper if we have all that? If God's with Joseph and he's with you, actually he's not with you, he's in you. Since you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says you have the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God. Uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, that all things are possible to those that believe. Can someone please tell me how failure fits into this, into this equation? Now, we all make mistakes, and the Bible says the righteous can fall seven times when they get back up. We're not, you know, we're, we're just going gonna to learn. you got to grow in these things. But the issue is we don't stay down because we have the promises. And people that have the promises think on the promises. They dwell on where they're going, not where they've been. Well, Pastor, I just don't see much happening in my life. That's the problem. <laughs> You'll get it in a minute. <laughs> the Bible says he's going to bless what? Everything you put your hands to. Everything you put your hands to. Who has the blessing? You do. Potiphar's stuff came under the blessing when Joseph put his hand to his stuff. When he gave him authority, yeah, you can touch that. You run that now. He put his hand to it, and the blessing of the Lord came on it. Whatever you put your hand to, you bring the blessing of God to. So here's the question. It says he's going to open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. The rain's coming. God's doing his part. Do you want to raise three tomato plants or 50,000? If you got the blessing... You're not going to think in survival. Let me raise really three really great tomato plants. You're going to be thinking of, I'm the head, not the tail. I'm the lender, not the borrow. Give me some more land. I'm raising them by the truckload. Do you understand what I'm saying? We think too small. We think like slaves. You got to think of who you are, man. You got to think you have the blessing. You're God's child. And there's a whole world of Potiphar's looking for God. They're not going to see them until you demonstrate what God looks like. The kingdom, right? 
Something else in the story about Joseph. It says he was put in charge of Potiphar's stuff. He was entrusted with Potiphar's stuff when no one knew his name. How you handle your life when no one knows your name determines if someone will ever know your name. Because Joseph had a dream. He was faithful to God. He was, God was his source. No self-promotion. Didn't have web pages back then and Facebook. He was going to trust God. And he was going to be faithful with integrity and details and excellence. Even when he went to prison, falsely accused, he operated in such integrity, they ended up letting him run the entire prison. What was going on? He was practicing. He was practicing handling responsibility. When he came before Pharaoh, it wasn't his first day out. He'd been running things a long time. Your destiny, God has for you, he's going to give you chances to practice before people know your name. So you can make mistakes and no one know about them. They're just you and him. And he's going to help you with those. But you have to operate in integrity. Joseph purposed in his heart that he was going to operate with in integrity and details during that time period. For Potiphar, he was a slave. He could have been so bitter at his brothers, bitter at God. But he operated in integrity. So bitter in prison, being falsely accused. After all he'd done for Potiphar, come on. All I've done for you and this is what happens, I get thrown in prison for life. Talk about the bitterness he could have experienced. But he set himself with God as his source, and he operated in that integrity and details. When you go to work, your employer should say, you are the very best employee I've ever had. Because your whole goal is to make them money. Well, no, pastor, it's to make me money. No, you've missed the whole point. If you set yourself to make them money, you will make money. God will make sure that happens. You see, what you practice in private has a big deal what happens in public. Integrity, how you handle, well, I don't really, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal how you handle small responsibilities. God has a great plan for your life. What I want you to leave with today is this. You have the promises. You have the blessing of God. Stop thinking like a slave. Stop thinking. It's how you think. How you think. What am I we thinking? You've got the promises. You have the promises. God is with you. He's going to put the rain out there. He's going to take care of stuff. But are you going to grow three tomato plants or is your, you're going to raise 50,000? God's got his part covered because you've got the promises. He's going to back his word up. What are you doing? Step up. God wants you blessed. You say, well, Pastor, you always talk about money and things like that. The reason I teach about money is so you'll be free from the fear of not having it. And you'll be freed of the greed of it. Because when you're at peace and you have money to pay your bills, you can think about other things. Like serving God, like helping people, like having a great marriage. But when you're under stress over money, it just kind of suffocates life. And the reason I probably talk about money a lot is because I went through nine years of that kind of suffocation. On antidepressants and panic attacks. And I wouldn't wish that on my, you know, favorite enemy. <laughs> it's horrible. It's, living, it's like living death. You know, it's horrible. But this applies to every area of life, healing, health, marriage, every, every aspect of life. You have the promises of God. The Bible says every promise is yes and amen, every promise. You, you have the blessing of God. You have the blessing of Abraham. You've got the blessing of being a son and daughter of God. The Holy Spirit in you has the answers. You've already got it, friend. It's amazing. So let's stand to our feet today. He'll bless what you put your hands to, what are your hands being put to? Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.